ties to the member from Scarborough Southwest, but uh, we are now moving on to member statements. Member statements. I recognize the member for Thornhill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Speaker, just over two weeks ago in my community of Thornhill, we experienced an unimaginable tragedy. A Tara Cohen, Aliha Hashalom, just nine years old, lost her life. It was devastating, not just for her parents and siblings, but for the entire community. Atara was a bright light of joy and warmth. She was kind, compassionate, imaginative, and playful. She had an incredible laugh, bubbly personality, and brought happiness to everyone around her. Speaker, the Cohen family lives in a small co-op. It's a tight-knit community, a warm group of people, and every single member felt its loss, not only in Thornhill, but in Ontario. It was a pedestrian accident, a vehicle pedestrian accident, an accident, but that doesn't lessen the impact on the family and the community. She was incredibly loved and will be dearly missed, and often when mourners come to a funeral service, they form a long chain along each side of the hearse as it drives past. This path went the entire length of the road to the synagogue to the main street. We were so proud to be there along with so many community members in unity. Atara's parents and her siblings and her family, my heart is with you. Uh, our community grieves for Atara now more than ever, and we are truly cognizant now of how precious life is. May her memory always be for a blessing. Thank you. Very much. Member statements. The member for Mishkigawak, James Bay. Thank you, Speaker. One of the most northern part of Ontario. Let me tell you what it is to lack access to health care and long term care service in the north. In March 2022, an announcement by this government was made saying that 20 new, 28 new and 60 upgraded beds to extended care would be in place in Caps Casing. People from the north are used to this reality. People have to move 100 kilometers away from their family members in order to have access to health care. And people have to wait more than three years to have access to long-term care. Bill 124 affected the ability to help and to provide health care. Speaker, when the government announced 68 new beds and improved service for long-term care in campus casing, it, was a, it is that much disappointing when the result is inexistent 28 months later, uh, 18 months later, sorry. According to the extended care, there is a delay due to a high cost of operation and construction of this project, due to taking so much time to build. Now needs more additional funding to begin. We are facing a province-wide housing crisis on all fronts, and some of the elderly do not even have the opportunity to age with dignity, surrounded by their loved ones. That is a sad reality in the North at the moment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Windsor to come see. Thank you, Speaker. <laughs> You know what? Uh, we're, Halloween is coming upon us, and last week I had no idea what I would be in store for when I accepted an invite to visit Scarehouse Windsor. <laughs> it's my region's premier Halloween experience, and on display was the world premiere of The Boo Crew, a new television docu-series which chronicled how Scarehouse Windsor truly came to be. As members here in this house, we have so much to be proud of within our communities. But Speaker, Director Gavin Michael Booth delivered an experience for all viewers that truly captured the many traits that can evoke our hometown pride. The series chronicles owners Sean and Colleen Lippert and Dario and Michelle Sovaggi. It was their sweat equity that created Scarehouse Windsor as a seasonal attraction that rivals any experience in North America. It was born out of the demise of their much beloved past Windsor business, Bentley's Roadhouse, but you cannot help but admire the ambitious and infectious entrepreneurism that was captured throughout the series, and unpredictably, it was the inclusivity, the accepting of so many young people who question their place in the world, 
that were part of Scare House Windsor that truly shone through. Speaker, you're already able to stream The Boo Crew on Bell 5 TV 1 today, so be sure to check it out. And to The Boo Crew, thank you for doing your part to make the Windsor-Essex region bar none, a place I'm proud to call home, a place I'm proud to represent, and a place that's worth living in each and every day. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for London Fanshawe. Thank you, Speaker. Today is Early Childhood Educator Appreciation Day. These educators create a safe and loving environment where children can flourish and develop essential life skills. They instill a love for learning and curiosity that will last a lifetime. Their role extends beyond mere supervision. They are our children's first mentors and role models, shaping their early experiences and laying the foundation for their future success. But ECEs tell me that they're not feeling very valued today. So, how can this government step up and ensure the childcare sector is there for families and children when they need them? For over a year, we've been raising alarm bells that the workforce care crisis threatens childcare in this province. The minister needs to release the report they conducted back in January, where, where the minister's own summary consultations revealed to pay ECEs more. The Ontario Coalition for Better Child Care, the Association for Early Childhood Educators, experts and workers have told this government that $10 a day child care program is under threat because low pay and poor working conditions, with the average ECE staying in the field for just three years. You need child care workers in child care spaces. This government, this minister, and this government promised ECEs a wage increase in June. So we are asking the minister, will he keep his promise and commit today to a salary scale of at least $30 per hour for our ECEs and $25 for non-ECEs to get the program back on track and to get parents affordable child care spots they need and deserve so they can get back to work? Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The Member for Essex. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, who is America's number three trading partner? It's not Germany, it's not Japan, and it's not even India. America's number three trading partner is Ontario. But, Mr. Speaker, I'm not satisfied with that. I want Ontario to be America's number one trading partner. <laughs> and that's why I'm excited about the Memorandum of Understanding signed by this government between Ontario and the state of Michigan. Ontario and Michigan are already each other's number one trading partner, but under this new Memorandum of Understanding, Ontario and Michigan are going to work together to build better vehicle supply chains, technology, cybersecurity, and agriculture. We're going to make our relationship with Michigan even stronger, and we're going to build an end-to-end -end vehicle supply chain. Mr. Speaker, once upon a time, Henry Ford crossed the Detroit River, and he set up a manufacturing factory at the old Walkerville Wagon Works, and that started a manufacturing revolution and made Ontario the economic powerhouse of Canada. Well, keep your eye on Ontario because we are going to do it again. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you very much, Speaker. I rise today with immense pride and admiration for a transformative pro project that exemplifies the potential for sustainability, cultural respect, and collaboration with Indigenous communities in the field of education and architecture. The A building, located at the Progress Campus of Centennial College, is more than just a structure. It is a testament to the power of visionary partnership that, and the profound impact such projects can have. At the heart of this remarkable initiative is the, is the college's commitment to fostering reconciliation and collaboration with Indigenous communities. The collaboration with the Indigenous-owned Ontario-based architecture firm, Smoke Architecture, served as a model for how in institutions can support and empower Indigenous businesses. This partnership underscores the importance of actively engaging Indigenous voices and perspectives in projects that directly affect their communities. What truly sets the A building apart is its deep-rooted connection 
to indigenous culture and heritage. The building takes inspiration from the beautiful poetry of Chief Stacy Laforme, Chief of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation Nations. In desi its design reflects traditional indigenous structures and is constructed using sustainable timber sourced from Quebec, highlighting the significance of sustainable practices and materials in modern construction. I wholeheartedly commend Centennial College for their visionary leadership and unwavering commitment to reconciliation, sustainability, and cultural respect. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The next statement, the member for Bram Brantford Brant. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to rise in this House today to talk about the Brantford Bulldogs' recent home opener. Brantford Brant is no stranger to hockey. As we all know, we are the birthplace and childhood home of the great one, Wayne Gretzky. This morning in the members' gallery are Peggy Chapman of the Brantford Bulldogs Foundation and His Worship Kevin Davis, Mayor of Brantford. If not for the work of Matt Turek and the rest of the Bulldogs organization and, of course, Michael Landlauer, the owner of the Brantford Bulldogs, who is also in attendance, there would not have been a home opener, and not to mention the incredible work of Icano Construction in getting the Civic Centre ready. We celebrate the return of OHL hockey to the Brantford Civic Centre for the first time since 1984, as well as a 5-2 home opener victory against their division rivals, the Oshawa Generals. Having had the privilege of attending the home opener, I was proud to see over 3,000 Bulldogs fans cheering on their team. These improvements have ushered in a new chapter in the history of Brantford and its rich, rich hockey culture. Thank you, and go Bulldogs go! All of Brantford Brant is in the doghouse, but in a good way. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Peterborough Kawartha. Thank you, Speaker. In my riding, we have a number of exceptional and award winning musicians. And one of those individuals is Melissa Knott, more commonly known as Missy. I first met Missy when we were organizing the Special Hockey International Tournament in Peterborough. Missy was already well known in the area as a singer and had released a number of albums at that point. She volunteered to sing the national anthems for us at the opening ceremonies with teams from Canada, the United States, and the United Kingdom. Not only is Missy an artist, but she's also a music producer. Her production company, Wild Rice Records, is focused on helping Indigenous artists succeed. Missy is also an advocate in our community, helping to spread the word about various causes. One of those causes has been to spread the word about the tragic death of one of her friends, Selena Taylor, a young lady from Curve Lake First Nation. All of this is to say that Missy is active in the arts and the Indigenous community and as a spokesperson. Speaker, I am so proud to announce my friend Missy Knott has been appointed to the Ontario Arts Council. She's the first member of Curve Lake First Nation to ever be appointed to the OAC. Her experiences as an artist, as a music producer and as an Indigenous role model will serve her well in this capacity. She'll provide an invaluable voice at the table and will be someone that other Indigenous artists can look up to as an example for success. Congratulations, Missy. We're all very proud of you. Here, here. Thank you. Member statements? The member for Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, it's an honour to rise today uh, to talk about uh, Perth Wellington today, Speaker. I know uh, we talk about our ridings a lot in this place, and it's great to be able to do that. And I'm thinking really of, uh, you know, we just celebrated Air Culture Week and Thanksgiving, and all the bounty that our farmers collect every year, and the great work our government is doing to support our farm families, whether it's through our Grow Ontario strategy and the investments we're making there. And as the member from Essex, as I, alluded, I heard briefly in his remarks about the trade speaker that we have, speaker, the amount of exports and agriculture that we provide to the states, but across the world is truly great. And I know with our Minister of Economic Development and under our leadership of our Premier, we'll continue to do that moving forward and ensuring that our agriculture sector remains strong. 
But it's not just our agriculture sector, Speaker, that we continue to support. It's also Small Business Week in Ontario, and I know there's plenty of small businesses in my riding of Perth, Wellington, and the Minister of Tourism is in front of me here, and I know he's been to the beautiful riding of Perth, Wellington, and to Stratford, and to seeing the many uh, small businesses, whether that's in the hospitality sector, whether that's in the manufacturing sector, Speaker. Uh, truly, Ontario is thriving again because of the leadership of our Premier and our ministers in our Cabinet, Speaker. Speaker, I think of the great announcement yesterday that was made uh, in eastern Ontario. 600 new net new jobs, Speaker. That's just direct jobs. <laughs> Speaker, we're going to continue to build Ontario for the next generation and going forward. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. That concludes our member statements for this morning. I beg to inform the House that, pursuant to Standing Order 9G, the Clerk has received written notice from the Government House Leader indicating that a temporary change in the weekly meeting schedule of the House is required, and therefore the afternoon routine on Wednesday, October the 18th, 2023, shall commence at 1 p.m. Introduction of Visitors